we've created a system that's super efficient and we take every measure we can to cut costs. And what that means is, is that if there's a small disruption, it can have a ripple effect through the whole system, the whole supply. And the, where we are now isn't a small disruption. This is an extremely large disruption to that system. This pandemic's made us realize one thing. We live in the land of plenty. But there's a food chain that is just as important to us as our military is. It wasn't easy at first because no one really knew what this virus is all about. There was a point where everybody was a lot of uncertainty what was going to happen. The stores started buying a lot of fruit, but then when the schools went out, we knew we were going to miss that market. 30% of the national supply of dairy products goes to food service. You've got to harvest every day and you've got to do something with it. We really didn't see it coming. We thought that this, this, this uh, COVID-19 would really just put a stop to everything. To see it literally going down the drain is, it's devastating. It's like asking these, these processing facilities who are making four trucks tomorrow to retool to make Priuses. This is the problem. You know that you know better than a bunch of government bureaucrats, so thank you. We can't let it take over our lives. Why would a tomato, a guy that's grown row crops his whole life, tomatoes and asparagus and alfalfa and cotton, rice or whatever he's doing, why would he want wake up one day, get rid of three generations of equipment that made him successful and turn around and start farming almonds? Anybody ever ask that question? During the COVID-19 issues and problems that everybody had, they wouldn't have been able to eat. I know there were times at stores when there was no toilet paper, you see no eggs, you would see no produce on the stands, and, and we continued to work, and the people who work for us continued to work, stayed on the job to help feed America. Production funding for American Grown, My Job Depends on Ack, provided by James G. Parker Insurance Associates, insuring and protecting agribusiness for over 40 years by Garv Bennett, the growing experts in water, irrigation, nutrition, and crop care advice and products. We help growers feed the world. By Golden State Farm Credit, building relationships with rural America by providing ag financial services. By Brandt, professional agriculture, proudly supporting the heroes that work hard to feed a hungry world every day. By Unwired Broadband, today's internet for rural Central California, keeping Valley Agriculture connected since 2003 by Hodges Electric, proudly serving the Central Valley since 1979, and by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for over 50 years, proudly featuring Coleman products, dedicated to supporting agriculture and the families that grow our nation's food. I came to tell you tonight that I lied, I, 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 I shut down, I let your flowers die, I let them die, I, I, I. So in this situation, it was uh, an abrupt stop to, in many cases, half of the supply having nowhere to go. We've shut down restaurants, we've shut down schools, uh, we've shut down so much of the food service side of things where a lot of this product is destined to go that now it doesn't have a home. And that's created some situations where we've had to dump certain uh, items or disc under, plow under existing fields. And it makes it extremely difficult for a, a farmer to make an informed decision about what's gonna happen six months from now. There's a lot of risk in what we do uh, financially and otherwise, but so if you've got, we'll take a farmer for example who planted a thousand acres of whatever, lettuce, and has had to disc under half of it because of this situation. And now he's got that financial investment that he may or may not owe money to a bank for that he didn't get it back. And now he's got to make a planning decision that may be 120 to 180 days out from now. And this, the type of uncertainty that comes with that 
is almost impossible to predict at this point. Try to make an analogy like this. We have two kinds of, of way we eat in America. We have, we eat at home or you eat out. And over a long period of time, Americans no longer really eat supper at home like we used to. We've gone out to eat. And so agriculture adapted over time to accommodate Americans and the world for that matter. Civilized nations, a lot of people eat out. We're a fast paced society, there's nothing wrong with that. But well, the log jam and the issues with animal um, right now is you have a whole industry geared to providing products to your hotels and your casinos and restaurant industry in bulk size products. You don't go to, into your average grocery store and find 50 pounds of bacon. They don't even have the shelf accommodations and the refrigeration size for somebody to go buy 50 pounds of bacon. You don't see 25 pounds of butter. These are the problems. There's, there's kind of a domino effect that happens when any, any sort of major disruption like this happens. So, for example, someone who is raising animals uh, needs someone to farm the feed for those animals. And now, again, if I go back to the planning decisions of these people, how many animals are going to be in that supply chain six months from now? Um, and what should we plant? today to make sure that, that there's enough feed, it really uh, starts to get a little fuzzy about how and why and, and what anybody should do. Give me, I hope you understand. So pre-COVID, we did stop picking lemons because the inventories were getting too large and the fruit wasn't moving out. Then once the COVID hit, lemons and the other citrus commodities really took off and demand increased. We opened in 2001 and we started as just a cold storage built the packing house, got into the citrus and the stone fruit, and uh, have, have been in business since. So as, as we tried to stay open, there were lots of times that we didn't get all the update, updated information that we needed as soon as we thought we needed to get it. So it was kind of a scramble every day to make sure that we were, if we would get a positive find, we would talk to, try to call people and figure things out. We weren't getting, the state of California wasn't giving us that information. Besides saying we are an essential business that needed to stay open, we did not get a lot of information directly from the state that helped us stay open to Feed America. I didn't want to lose my people. I did not want to lose my workforce. Because when you lose your workforce, whoever you do have left, they got to work twice as hard. And I just, I just don't like to lose anybody for whatever reason. And the thing with this COVID-19, it brought fear into people. Some people didn't want to even come to work, knowing that it, the, the possibility was there to be infected by this virus. So right here, the ladies for the packing tables out here, the fruits being dropped to them, sized with a sticker. So they know what, si what size uh, pack style goes into the size of tray. So we're trying to keep extra precaution with the ladies, trying to keep them separated. Then they, once they get it packed, they put it onto the conveyor belt here. The full box line goes in and then comes around over here to our quality control area where the ladies are weighing their boxes, checking for imperfections. We're also taking bricks, sugars, taking samples of pressures. And then from there, the boxes would come around, go over here to the palletizing station, where our palletizers would stack by size. And then after that, the boxes would get strapped and corner boarded. We put our G10 stickers on there and our pallet tag. So once the forklift drivers bring it off the line, the fruit comes over here, where they get the G10 stickers put on the side of the box. 
designates the grower's information, the day, lot number. So pre-COVID, the, the citrus markets were down. There wasn't uh, a lot of demand for the citrus items, which includes the lemons, the navels. Even the mandarins had slowed down in, in, uh, in sales. And once COVID hit, we were, uh, we were very high demand. We had to hire more employees, get more pick, fruit picked out of the field, and, and spend more hours at the packing house to get things done. If you look at the news daily, uh, all you hear is bad news. And that's one thing I do not like to hear is uh, people putting fear into my workers. I just tell them it's all in God's hands. God's in control. We're not. Why not, if, you, if you've got a log jam of animals, why can't you just put them back out in a field and hope that you wait for things to change? Why well, do you kill them? Well, the, the, the reason why you can't just put them back in the field is because of the log, log jam in excess, the prices, they're worthless now. Because there's, it's just kind of like the oil industry, the, the price went negative. Price went negative virtually because there's no more, there's no more capacity to put it. All the tanks are filled, so if you're holding on to a product, it, it becomes almost worthless because there's no virtually no need for it. So now you're gonna you're gonna have to spend money to feed an animal that you're otherwise you can't afford anymore. Um, and sometimes size is a problem. The animals are are are, are, are you know harvested at certain at sizes, and you can't just keep getting them bigger and bigger. You know the whole process is very interesting. We've got very efficient at what we do and how we do it, um, but something like COVID is kind of the unintended consequences of. Uh, and it's not a bad thing. I, we all eat out and everything, but there's 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 this um, two sides of agriculture that um, I don't know if people really expected the wholesale issue with animals to to be affected like this. I certainly didn't. People ask, well, why why can't we you know take that food and and supply it and give it to food banks? Well, the farmer has a choice of either cutting his loss and disking it under. You know, if you're gonna donate it to a food bank, who's gonna pay the farmer to harvest it, to package it, to, uh, you know, then you talk about the, the logistics of transportation from the, from the farm, trucking, um, packing costs and all these things. So it was, it was cheaper for the, for the farmer to cut his loss and actually, you know, put a disc in the field and disc it under. Uh, we saw the same thing in the dairy industry, um, people, weren't buying dairy products, they were more interested in, in buying sanitizer and toilet paper. And so what happened was the dairy farmer also had, you can't store it, so they were, you know, dumping, you know, millions of gallons of, uh, of milk, uh, you know, every day. Some of my family owns a restaurant locally. Uh, if, if they apply for the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, they can get money from the federal government to keep their employees' uh, income up, right? They can write them paychecks. Well, the state of California and, and our county is telling them that they can't open the doors to their establishment. But within the next eight to 10 weeks, somehow they have to figure out how to reemploy these people, but they can't open the doors to their business. So you've got the federal government incentivizing keeping people employed, but then you've got the state and local government here not allowing you to get your business back up and running. And on top of that, some of the employees are actually making more money on unemployment. Therefore, there, it's a disincentive for them to even want to go back to work. You know, we you can give us whatever title we, you want to give us, which is which is fine. I mean, we are essential, whether there's a virus going on or not. We are essential, and that goes for every everyone uh, related in in this industry, in the ag industry. Uh, was, like I said, we feed the world. Uh, I, I'm, again, we're not heroes, okay? We're not heroes. Don't ever I, I don't ever want to hear that we're heroes because we're not. We're doing a job that we want to do. I've been doing this for over 30 years. I love my job, or else I wouldn't be coming to work every day. We put in long hours, 
and, and, and every day is something different because when I step foot into this facility, I don't know what time I'm going home. I just don't because anything could happen. I could be here 12, 14, 15, 20 hours, or I could be here five hours. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, when it's all said and done, I know that what we're providing is a great product for people to eat and not just us, but everyone else. The problem with what's going to happen is the animals that need to be harvested now and, and that aren't and they're going to be euthanized and, and it's horrible is if we go a month from now and we slowly get back to normal there's going to be a huge gap now prices are going to be i mean there's going to be a short it's you, there's even another shortage looming you got a shortage of not being able to process um, because you have uh, too many animals to process at uh, retail facilities now if the wholesale stuff comes back and the demand comes back now you have no animals for the wholesale or, or the or the retail side of things and that's the worry that's the worry thing and I'm glad that um, Trump made a smart decision is to you know make these companies stay open um, um, so we can try not to make the best use and figure out what to do with these animals. So here's the uh, branch where we, we are currently picking the yellow peaches. And we will get out here and uh, see some of the fruit being picked. So since the reopening and, and, and stores starting to really get back to more normal, I guess, uh, per se business, it, they still haven't been uh, very consistent. It's week to week. Guys don't want to run ads. They're having a difficult time just keeping keeping uh, demand, keeping track of demand and how things have been going. Is it necessary to completely shut it down? Or if you leave it in the hands of local people, they might make a different decision that says, hey guys, we need you to try and uh, do things differently, but keep your business open and keep the economy running in a way that still protects people, but doesn't just completely shut off the valve, the economic valve that we all rely on. Kind of like the Great Dep Depression era. I'll, I'll use this as an example. My grandparents, when when I got older, I kind of thought, well, why are you guys canning food? Why are you guys always growing a garden for? You know, as it, when I was a kid. And it, but my grandma and grandpa, they were serious about. It. I mean, they were serious garden growers. And boy, my grandpa, boy, he had a lot of pride about showing his pantry full of canned food because the Great Depression changed them for life. And they always thought that they were responsible for their own selves and their families. And so they stored up and uh, millions of Americans used to do that canning and that would get them through the winter time or get there in time of something like this. Uh, but we, we don't do that and so maybe something like this encourages us to be so, so much not relying on what, what's, what someone else could do for you but more like what you can do for yourself in your own planning. Uh, now that we're all not just not just the people that are working here, but the people when you know, say for instance, when you go shopping, we're all starting to get used to wearing our mask. You go to a store and it says you need to enter with your mask, or you can't enter. I see it's not it's not an issue anymore as as it was at the beginning because a lot of people don't want to be told what to do, especially when they're on their own time. And I think for the next time we have a, a wave of a, a bad virus, I think people could be more adjusted. They're going to be more prepared. They're, gonna be, they're not going to have as much fear in them, and they'll be able to overcome it. Now, this virus, we, we could all get it someday. We don't know. We don't know, but we can't let it take over our lives, and that's what we have to keep from, from, from happening, is it taking over our lives. I know a lot of people were stuck at home because of their jobs, and, and, and I feel sorry for those people, and you know, God take care of them, but, but in this ag industry, we have to feed not just this country, but the world.
you know, continuing on where we are, you know, with COVID now looking at a second wave. Um, farmers looking onto the next planting season are going to make decisions, you know, based upon where we are in the marketplace and pricing, supply and demand. And they're going to change their, if they're able to, uh, they're going to change their cropping patterns that will result in, in different crops that we can grow, that we may not grow. Uh, there may be um, a, a, a lack of food um, because farmers are not willing to make that uh, investment to grow certain, certain high cash crops that would not be profitable and that are perishable that we won't see you know, show up uh, in months to come in, in our supermarkets. I hope it is worth it. I hope that since this situation is here, this is reality, whether you agree with it or disagree with it is irrelevant. I, I, but I hope it was worth it in the respect that people take a second look at what we've taken for granted for so long and actually take the time and the energy to change it for the better so we don't have to do this again. That will make it worth it in my eyes. You know, I, I, think at, I think at the core, I think we've just become such an affluent country and we've never had to worry, especially our generation, of anything remotely like this. And so it set us back. There's, there, I think there's going to be some long-term changes that are going to come down. And it may, it may be that um, Americans really um, um, think about cooking at home and not running out and, 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 and eating at restaurants and that it's going to harm may cause some terrible harm to a lot of great people who own who own restaurant business I don't know I, I'm not fearful of it I'll still eat out and and I enjoy that and, and enjoy doing that um, but as a whole we, we don't know we, we may have some uh, the demand is what's going to create the change what, what are our people going to demand from us as as farmers is going to be interesting Yeah, you're, you're going to see uh, farmers growing um, uh, different different crops that have a longer shelf life. I anticipate there'll be a shortage of uh, you know fresh produce with with lack of logistics throughout the world. You know, people think we can always import food from other countries, um, we, you know, which I, I don't think is true. And then we also need to look at uh, you know food safety. I think people don't understand is is we're fortunate in the United States. We grow, we grow the safest crops in the world at a cheapest price, and the diversity of crops that we grow, just in California, we grow over 350 you know, different crops. We supply 60% you know, of the fruits and vegetables to the United States, and, and people understand that that food is the safest in the world. You know, I don't really want my food to be imported from a third world country, from a dictator who doesn't like us. I think we can all remember back when, you know, the oil embargo and OPEC and, and we were all waiting in lines uh, to get gas, you know, depending upon what our license plate was, we could, you know, get gas on, you know, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and other folks could do on Tuesday, you know, Thursday and Saturday. As far as uh, the food supply, I don't want to be dependent upon, you know, that type of third world, you know, country is having control over our food supply. That's why American agriculture and supporting the American farmer in today's environment is now more important than ever, ever before.
Production funding for American Grown, My Job Depends on Ag, provided by James G. Parker Insurance Associates, insuring and protecting agribusiness for over 40 years. By Garv Bennett, the growing experts in water, irrigation, nutrition, and crop care advice and products. We help growers feed the world. By Golden State Farm Credit, building relationships with rural America by providing ag financial services. By Brandt, professional agriculture. Proudly supporting the heroes that work hard to feed a hungry world every day. By Unwired Broadband, today's internet for rural Central California, keeping Valley Agriculture connected since 2003. By Hodges Electric, proudly serving the Central Valley since 1979. And by Valley Air Conditioning and Repair, family owned for over 50 years, proudly featuring Coleman products, dedicated to supporting agriculture and the families that grow our nation's food.